Morning Consult and Politico did a poll of the top 2020 contenders against Trump. So they went through the uh, Democratic field. And I want to go ahead and show you the results. And I think you'll notice something up front in terms of a problem with this poll. So uh, they say that Biden's favorability among the base uh, is 74%. Then you have Elizabeth Warren, 51%. Al Franken, 45 percent, even though he, uh, you know, stepped down over uh, sexual misconduct allegations. You have Cory Booker, 37 percent. Tim Kaine, or as I call him, uh, the human saltine cracker. Tim Kaine, 37 percent. Andrew Cuomo, the governor of New York, 35 percent. Kirsten Gillibrand, 28 percent. Kamala Harris, 27 percent. Senator Christopher Murphy of Connecticut, 23 percent. Governor Steve Bullock of Montana who a grand total of eight people have even heard of, 21%. Terry McAuliffe of Virginia, corporate Democrat extraordinaire, blue dog Democrat extraordinaire, 22%. Uh, Amy Klobuchar, uh, 20%. John Hickenlooper, 19%. Again, John Hickenlooper. It sounds more like a serial than a, than a politician. Starbucks executive Howard Schultz. Is this getting a little ridiculous to you? 21%. Um... Former Missouri Secretary of State, what the fuck, Jason Kander, 19%, Los Angeles Mayor Eric Garcetti, 19%, Disney CEO Bob Iger, 19%, Governor Jay Inslee of Washington, 17%, Seth Moulton of Massachusetts, okay, come on now, is 16%. So, uh, what they did for this poll is they basically said, all right, name anybody, and they're going to be a uh, 2020 contender for the Democrats to take down Trump. So go ahead, name anybody. You want like a random state senator from Wyoming? Uh, let's say 26%. They have a 26% favorability among the Democratic base. So um, they just threw all the names against the wall here and asked everybody what their take is. And, you know, these are the results. So, of course, the main headline that everybody's walking away with is, you know, Joe Biden, favorite among the Democratic base, followed by Liz Warren. Yes. Yes. Uh, now, you probably have already noticed the problem with this poll. But if you haven't, think about it for a second. Who was left off? Bernie Sanders. They put fucking John Hickenlooper. They put a breakfast cereal. They put a human saltine cracker. They put people that nobody knows who the fuck they are. Jason Kander? Steve Bullock? Is that Sandra Bullock's dad? But they didn't put Bernie Sanders. They are going to come up with every trick in the book in 2020 to deny Bernie Sanders. They are going to bend over backwards. They're going to do mental gymnastics in a way that uh, you and I have never seen. We already learned about one of their tricks, which Howard Dean showed us on MSNBC when he said, oh, oh, see, I... I think this is, the Democratic Party has to change. And the progressives are taking over the Democratic Party. That's a good thing. But it's because of that, that we have the young people taking over the party, that I want a young candidate. So uh, forget Bernie Sanders. Like, ah, Kamala Harris, Cory Booker. How about that? So you see the trick? It's, oh, I agree with the young millennials, which is why I'm going to support somebody who's younger for president and not Bernie Sanders. But wait, hold on. It's the young people who want Bernie Sanders. So what are you doing? That's called a bait and switch. Oh, I'm totally with you. That's exactly, I agree 100% with you, which is why I'm against Bernie Sanders and I'm for somebody younger who's a corporatist. It is a, a sad trick who everybody's, which everybody's going to see through. But now look at, I mean, this is just a snub beyond snubs. Because guess what? When they craft these polls, they sit around in a room you know, it's the people at Morning Consult, but really the people at Politico, because they're the ones who, you know, got the people at Morning Consult to do the poll for them. They're the polling company. But Politico were the ones who said, we want to do a poll on the 2020 contenders. And they all sat around a room and they said, OK, who are we going to put on this list? And you think Bernie wasn't brought up by somebody? 
Of course Bernie was brought up by somebody, and they were like, no, we're gonna leave him off the list. Why? Ah, uh, stuff. Things. Don't care. Just leave him off the list. Because the establishment and the corporatists will never take him seriously. And they'll never take him seriously because he doesn't want to play ball with them. The corporatists and the establishment are like, yeah, fuck that guy. We'd rather have former Missouri Secretary of State Jason Kander on the list. Disney CEO. Has anybody even fucking mentioned that guy? Thought of that guy? Nobody cares about any of these people. And by the way, it's not like we don't have old poll numbers. So, you know, they say, uh, oh, Joe Biden's the front runner. 74% favorability among the base. What's Bernie's favorability among the base? Over 80%. And that's why he's left out, too. It's hard for the establishment to write articles going, our, our, our enemy is the one who's the front runner. So we're just going to pretend. I, I mean, we've seen this also with Justice Democrats. We just covered the story the other day about how uh, Allison Hartson, Senator Feinstein's strongest um, opponent, literally, based on grassroots support, based on money raised from the grassroots because she takes no corporate PAC money, whatever metric you want to use, number one contender, they downplay her. They, they said, oh, the most prominent contender is uh, Kevin DeLeon, who negative four people care about. So they just, they, they try to snub you in every way. I mean, it was Politico who wrote the article that said, um, Bernie Sanders supporters largely giving, um, you know, the establishment wing of the party a pass. Based on what? Based on what? There are so many great candidates who are primarying corporate Democrats. And everybody started busting ass and working really hard from day one after the, the uh, 2016 election. So... The only way you can come to that conclusion is if you're covering your eyes and you're covering your ears and you're saying, I'm going to, I already wrote the article before looking at the evidence. So they didn't look at the evidence. They didn't look at the facts on the ground. They didn't look at the over 50 candidates that are primarying uh, Congress people and, and senators. They just said, I'm just going to, I, this is what I want to be true. And this is the narrative that my corporate overlords want me to push. So that's what I'm going to do. In other words, the idea is. Uh, guys, you don't have a choice. You don't have a choice. I just want the Democratic base to understand you don't have a choice. Uh, we've made you fall in line election cycle after election cycle, and now we're going to continue to make you fall in line election cycle after election cycle. And even when it is beyond obvious and it's in everybody's face that there is a, a giant coup happening, they go, what? That's what? No, Bernie's, he's not even on the list. So what about you? You want to support fucking Disney CEO Bob Iger? That's who you should support because he's on the list. We added him to the list. We have, uh, we have determined in our smoke-filled back room to leave Bernie off the list because he might hurt our corporate profits. So, uh, you know, he's just not on the table. There are no, uh, you know, primary challengers to establishment Democrats. So I guess you're gonna have to sell for establishment Democrats again. This is what they do, man. You know, and you wonder why alternative media outlets, new media outlets like mine. Uh, and there are many others out there, why we're rising in popularity. We're rising in popularity, not because we're great, but more because the mainstream is beyond pathetic, and they suck, and they just, they lie to you. They're either massively ignorant, or they're lying to you. And this is something that you think, like what, people, you think people are not going to think of Bernie Sanders, who is their favorite to be the 2020 nominee? Just because you wrote your shitty little article and excluded him, and you did your shitty poll and you excluded him, even though you, you know, added, I don't know, some fucking state representative from North Dakota. <laughs> it's not, we're not just going to forget about Bernie. We're not just going to forget about the corporate Democrats and the DNC rigging the primary the last time around. And how, uh, you know, the corporate Democrats don't support Medicare for all. They don't support free college. They don't support a living wage. They don't want to end the wars. They still take corporate money. We're not just going to forget. Because, you know, unlike perhaps some older generations, we, we don't give a shit about your flowery rhetoric and whether or not you look uh, presentable and you look like a shiny, polished politician. What we care about is fucking policies. So you're not going to pull the wool over our eyes anymore. But this is like, it's just such a grotesque example of that. Like, what do you think you're accomplishing here? Like... Oh, you, we're all just going to forget about, oh, look at this list. Uh, Bernie's not on the list. I guess he doesn't account for anything anymore. Well, 
you've been trying to do that all along, and the guy's the, the most favored politician in the country. Literally. Doesn't matter how you ask it. When you ask people in their respective states, so you go to Vermont for Bernie, you go to Kentucky for Mitch McConnell, and you ask their constituents, uh, Bernie is the most, is the, everybody's favorite politician. So everybody's favorite senator. They self-report, hey, this guy is a great senator. He's number one in the country by far. Now, when you don't do it on a state-by-state -state basis and ask their own constituents and you just ask the entire country, Bernie still wins. So, and then, of course, there were all the polls where he destroyed Trump. You know, Hillary had a maybe a three-point or four-point lead on average nationally over Trump within the margin of error. Um, Bernie had an 11-point lead, 12-point lead on Trump. Not within the margin of error. And, of course, the people who Bernie was accused of having too much support of, it's a weird criticism, are the people who could have won this election. Um, and made Donald Trump not president. So, point is, and I think you all get it, it's overwhelming. The evidence that we have right now is overwhelming that Bernie would have won. Bernie's still the most favored politician in the country. Trump's numbers are tanking. Hillary's numbers are tanking. Bernie's numbers are rising. Because the more people hear him, the more they like him. Because they know, oh, I think that guy's looking out for me. Because he's been saying the same thing for decades. The things that he wants are things that help uh, working people. But it, it is because of those things that shitty Politico and Morning Consult just go, yeah, leave him off our poll. Leave the fucking front runner off our poll of the 2020 contenders for the Democrats. We can't let them do to Bernie what they did to Bernie in 2016. We can't let him do it. We, we have to fight back three times as hard. We have to... They have to hear us roar. They have to not deny us. Because, uh, you know, I keep saying this, but it's more true than ever. Nobody's coming to save us. We have to come to save ourselves. So that means you spread uh, the word through word of mouth. You are the ones who are boots on the ground, knocking on doors to get the word out, making phone calls. And this goes for every great candidate that's out there, whether it's Paula Jean Swearingen in West Virginia, whether it's Allison Hartson in California. You have to be the ones to spread the word, to uh, put the time in, to make the donations, because they're every single thing they bias against us. Because guess what? In a true free marketplace of ideas and policies, we win 10 out of 10 times. Because it's just clear. Look on, hey, here's a sheet of paper with what our candidates are for. Here's a sheet of paper with what the corporate Democrats are for. Who do you want? 10 out of 10 times, people are going to say, I want this person. I want the populist left person. So since that's the case, that's why they feel like we have to rig it. We have to rig it. We just leave Bernie off the poll, pretend like there's no primaries happening anyway. This is why they have to do these dirty tricks. Because they can't win in a straight-up fight. So, uh, when, they, when they're totally indifferent and they don't cover us at all, when they take just colossal amounts of corporate money, and we take no corporate money, even though our ideas are more powerful, they have the upper hand. Because there's a well-oiled machine propping up the corporatists in the establishment and snubbing us. So, but now at least you have, you know, you have shows like this where we can just go, hey, wait, this is bullshit. You see what's going on here? That's bullshit. And we can begin to fight back. So don't let them win, man. Don't let them win. I mean, what kind of sick shit is that? You're going to leave them off the poll? Because there's no, there's no innocent explanation to that. You know what I mean? So let's say you all did forget, uh, you know, oh, we, oops, we just forgot. But you remembered fucking Disney CEO and John Hickenlooper and Amy Klobuchar? So if you real if you genuinely forgot, then you're a bunch of idiots and you shouldn't be involved in the in political media. You should just move along. If whoops, I forgot about the fucking front runner of the Democratic Party on a poll of who should be the uh, the nominee in 2020. So that's inexcusable if it was genuine ignorance. But it's not ignorance. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's on purpose. Somebody floated it. No, leave him off. Uh, he's a uh, you know hey. 
He's a unicorn, fairy dust, pie in the sky, lefty, he might actually hurt our corporate profits. He really believes in the shit he's talking about. He wants to make us a social democratic country and catch up to the rest of the modern world. You know, he wants to give people jobs and a living wage and health care and <laughs> icky. You know, hey, we're for the status quo business as usual. Just leave them off. God, they're so disgusting, man. <laughs> they put Starbucks CEO on here. But they left off Bernie Sanders. The, the, the degree to which the establishment makes my blood boil, I cannot put into words.